So this is precisely how I feel after I take a shower. I'm clean. It's Mr. Crazy Guy. <laughs> what is wrong with him? He's like, ah! This guy's still going at it. <laughs> Why is this so funny? All right, I gotta find somewhere to sleep. I'm not doing very well with finding anywhere except that rest area, which I'm not really wanting to go to. There's another van lifer. I'm gonna call the Cracker Barrels. I think there's a Cracker Barrel right there. I'm gonna call the Cracker Barrels, see if I can park. It's a city ordinance thing. If not, then I'm gonna go all the way down to Boulder. It's eight o'clock right now. It's cold. This is good. Anyway, there's another van lifer with their secret solar panels on top. I don't know why they make me laugh so much. Actually, one of my coworkers years ago dressed up as one of these for Halloween, like Halloween dress up day at school. He was like six foot nine or something ridiculous. And he started just waving his arms around all day at everybody. It was really funny. Like every meeting, he's just doing the same thing. It's pretty funny, anyway. All right, I hate drying my hair because because I ruined my hair by dyeing it blonde because the chemicals at, Ash, um, at Madison Reed um, basically destroyed my hair. So I don't dry my hair with a hair dryer, I just let it air dry. And then I put like all the moisturizer, like leave-in conditioner and stuff. Doesn't matter. Anyway, I'm gonna drive all the way to Boulder about an hour from here near the trailhead. I'm gonna go to the trailhead first. If I can park there, I will. If not, I'll go park outside the hospital. Uh, there's a road where the bunch of van life is parked. So, um, yeah, I, I don't like this part of Colorado. It's impossible to find somewhere to park overnight. None of the Cracker Barrels allow it. None of the Walmarts. Um, Bass Pro Shop is all the way down in Colorado Springs. It's the only place I know of. And the other one is in Manitou Springs where I paid $20 to the Fountain View, uh, Fountain Creek Motel, um, where I stayed like two years ago uh, in a room, like Airbnb room. And then last uh, month I stayed, when I did matter to incline, yeah, in July, then I stayed there in the van for $20, but I don't feel like paying $20 to go park. I don't wanna pay $20 for anything. Anyway, I'm gonna go drive an hour, I need to get gas. Thank you Planet Fitness for freshening me up. <laughs> it's shower day. I'm gonna shower again tomorrow anyway, after my hike. I just wanted to be clean to go to bed. So it's always nice to be clean going to bed. Um, anyway, and then tomorrow, yeah, tomorrow I drive into uh, central Colorado. So I'm gonna be, hanging out and being social will be nice. It'll be really good to see, you know, people I haven't seen in a while. So anyway, okay, let me get out of this parking lot. Actually, the phone I'm recording on is a phone I need to see the directions on. So let me do all this stuff. There we go. Oh, where am I going? I don't know. How do I get out of here? Ooh, they have a soft serve frozen yogurt, but it is cold. So I cannot get out of this parking lot. <laughs> Maybe that's the reason. Uh, Ma'am, you were parked here overnight. I couldn't get out of the parking lot, dude. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, and I, I guess I need to look into it because I'm going to definitely be coming back through here quite often. Um, I could go to the rest area. I just don't feel comfortable because there are people that, you know, camp overnight and stuff. I really can't get out of this parking lot. Hang on one second. Okay, I figured it out. <laughs> I was driving around with an REI as well. Everything's in this. So, um, Fort Collins. Uh, Planet Fitness. There's an REI right there. There's Barnes & Noble, Old Navy. Uh, everything you need is right here, except the place to park. Um, but I think I can park outside an apartment. No one will care because neighbors will think, oh, it's just someone else's vehicle. Like apartments, everyone's doing shit, so they're not going to report shit. <laughs> That's what I find. Like everyone's just as equally, you know, wanting their friends and family to park, so they're not going to say anything. I've never had an issue. I parked in some of the hardest places like Santa Barbara, Ventura, and parked outside like fancy apartments and nobody ever said anything. Anyway, okay, I don't know where I'm going. Let me, let me figure this out, I think I go straight. So that's weird, I stay on this like regular road for 24 miles <laughs> to get to Boulder and then I get on the freeway. So here's the issue, like I'm ex-military, right? I'm a veteran, I can get on any military base pretty much in the world, I'm pretty sure. I know I can do it in, in any military base in the country and I can get on there with my van. I uh, just have to have my uh, letter for registration, which the only people that ever need my receipt for my annual registration in Texas are military bases around the country because other states 
require you to carry a letter or they have like tags on your like the um, on your license plate different things and uh, people are surprised that we don't have tags on our license plates in Texas now we have it on our inside of our windshield because in, when I lived in California my people would always steal the tags off my um, off my license plate because then they can like not have to register their car it's kind of bullshit anyway um, but I know that there's like the Air Force Base Colorado Springs I know they do have sometimes they have campsites um, but you know, I, I could always, I don't have time right now to look into it, um, but I think I need to start looking into where I can actually park overnight. Um, I was half tempted to just park in a Nissan dealer, um, which I've left my vehicle many times at Nissan dealers when I've gotten gone to the airport because I've had to um, like get my car fixed and then I was flying home. Like when I lived in California, I was like, oh, well I guess I, guess I get free parking at the Nissan dealer, although it's a $3,000 worth of repairs that I'm getting so three thousand dollar parking space um but yeah like but I wasn't in my van at that time but yeah I mean I've totally had no problems the last five weeks <laughs> like finding anywhere to park and that parking space or the uh there was a place I parked last night in Wyoming was fantastic in Casper I can't believe I was in Wyoming like 24 hours ago um but you know this whole area from uh Fort Collins down through uh, Denver, Loveland, Denver, or Loveland and Boulder on like the west side of Denver, and then Denver proper, and then going down into Colorado Springs. I mean, it's like, you know, I'm just gonna have to try the trailheads. It is dark though, and I don't really feel comfortable trying to find parking in the dark because it's kind of hard to see the bikes on the back when I'm trying to parallel park or park in a place. But um, I think I should just be able to find somewhere in a mountain. It's not easy, and it's a shame because. Um, I don't know it just it would be safe and it would be nice if they it would be nice if Colorado on this side of Colorado would allow you to sleep at rest areas but they don't and it doesn't make any sense I go well we don't like overnight parking I'm like okay so you want me to get on the road without any sleep whatsoever this is why people get slammed into but the cops said when I called an non-emergency line last night they said you know what or today rather I think it was they said you know what we we don't send anyone over there to check or ticket we don't mark your tires every hour or any of that stuff but we, um, you know, we, we may knock on your window if you've been there a long time and we may ask you and just tell whoever knocks on your window. But when I was, I think I stayed there last year and I think I asked the attendant lady and she said, oh, we just put that sign up so people don't park for an entire week. So maybe I just go park there because it's already 8.30. But I mean, if I go down to Boulder, I could, I mean, there's a bunch of like mountain roads and I'm gonna go up and do this hike tomorrow. Um, and then I'm gonna head into central, central, uh, central Texas, not yet, uh, central Colorado. It's just frustrating. I mean, I don't know any other state that doesn't let you sleep at a rest area, even just for a few hours. I just need to sleep from like 10 p.m. to 5 a.m. and I'm good. It'd get me seven hours sleep and I'm happy. Um, but anyway, so I should probably get gas as well. I'll get gas on a little bit further down. Uh, but yeah, gas is back to being expensive again. <laughs> it was nice in uh, Wyoming. It was only like three oh two a, a gallon. It was like Texas prices, and I'm here now where it's like three seventy eight or something. I don't know this this whole area. I, I know it's populated. I know it's busy, um, but you know there, there's a lot of people come through here with their you know tiny homes on wheels to do adventure stuff and go out into like nature. And a lot of people drive across country and stop in. You know the Denver area is like a halfway point um, I could go park at the airport <laughs> um, because nobody checks you park at the airport seven dollars and not a single person is gonna check to see if I'm sleeping in my in my van that would be an option too I should probably just do that but that's way on the other side of Denver it's the wrong side of Denver and I'm still gonna have to drive an hour tomorrow morning to go hike so I'd rather just go out to Boulder worst case scenario I just go as far into the forest road and go find a pull off somewhere um, but yeah, I mean, it's just for one night and I could have gone an hour or two back, but I'd be two hours from the trailhead. I could have gone an hour or two back to the Wyoming Welcome Center, right on the state line, which is like 30, 40 miles behind me, um, park there. Um, but then again, I'm an hour and a half from, uh, and I don't really want to backtrack and I don't want to waste gas. So yes, yeah, so I'm on this road for 24 hours. Oh, $3 a gallon. Holy crap. Should I get gas down here? I've got... 40 miles to go three dollars a gallon that's the thing like when i don't fill up somewhere for like a few days and then i'm like did gas just suddenly plummet like what the hell anyway my windshield is covered in bugs as well i need to wipe it down so that's what it is so i'm in 
back in the uh, east side of Colorado. I was just on the west side like two weeks ago over on the Million Dollar Highway. So yeah, Colorado is easy. I mean, it's easy to do and get around. But yeah, the the I always thought like I was worried that Durango and Silverton and all that was going to be hard. But then I forget that Denver is like the hardest place to find overnight parking. But you can you can park for seven dollars a night. You can park at the airport. And once you park your van, because I actually was almost going to sleep. I slept on the floor of the airport overnight. And I thought, well, shit, I could have just stayed in my van. Because where you get the bus at the Denver airport is like, you know, 40, 50 yards away from where you would park. So they don't come around like they do in Albuquerque. You come right up to where you pull in. They don't even check. You're like, you just have to go stand in the little uh, bus stop, you know, on the main, main road in the parking lot and go get your... Um, and go get the, the shuttle to the airport. So they're not gonna check. So they don't know if you're sleeping in your van. And the next morning you just leave. <laughs> so I know a lot of people that sleep at the Denver airport. Uh, but like I said, it's way on the other side and I don't really wanna, I'm already gonna be driving four hours tomorrow. I don't really wanna be driving anymore. And plus doing a hike. I'm already tired. I've been driving all day today. I did two hikes, it was fantastic. It was so good. I'm, I'm really just, I can't believe I'm just in Wyoming. I'm like, oh, I was over in Wyoming. I had such a good time today. It was it was so interesting. That prison tour was really cool. It was long. It was an hour and a half, but it was it was pretty cool. Now this is the other Walmart. They also said no. I've called every Walmart in this area. I've called every Cracker Barrel, and every single person said no. So I'm thinking that it's a. But there's van life in there. I think people just do it anyway when they're not supposed to. But I don't do that. I've never, in the three and a half, three years, eight months I've been doing van life, I've never, ever, ever parked illegally. Now, if it says like no overnight parking and then non-emergency line says, yeah, you can put, or no overnight camping, but yes, you can park, then that's fine. Like I've always either asked for permission if I'm unsure of what the sign means, or I just don't park there. Like I park where, you know, it's allowed. But yeah, I mean, there's tons of camper vans at that Walmart right now. That's just, you know, that's why they crack down. It's like, if you just do it anyway, they're gonna be like, well, we need a way to stop these people from just coming in. You know, that's just, it's, oh, 292, I'm gonna get gas here. I'm gonna get gas anyway. 292, okay. Uh, you know what, I'm gonna get gas tomorrow. There's gonna be more Murphy gas stations. 292 in, in Colorado. Seriously, there has to have been an apocalypse, I guarantee you. Anyway, so, yeah, 7-Eleven is 298. Why is gas so cheap? It was like $4 last year. Colorado, you won't let me park, but you're gonna give me enough gas to go drive back to Wyoming? <laughs> so I can go park there? What the hell? Yeah, it's $2.92, $2.94 for diesel. What? That can't be right. There has to be a war or something that just happened. Somebody got bombed, you know, because I'm like, why is it suddenly cheap? Anyway, I'm on this for another like 24 miles, so. All right, I'll let you know where I end up staying. This is a Habitat for Humanity. I should just ask like businesses if I can just park in the back. Even like van build companies won't even let you park like unless you buy their $200,000 Sprinter. Yeah, Sinclair is $292 for the gas. Okay, it's got to be, it's got to be the same down in Boulder. This can't be right. Like Fort Collins and Boulder have to be about the same. I've got gas buddies so I can always see. Anyway, I'm babbling too much. My hair is drying. I need to make dinner, which I'm going to have a late dinner tonight. I think I'll just make a cup of tea. And hopefully if I can just park at the trailhead. Trailheads, here's the thing, trailheads are 24 hours, usually, like especially on BLM, like 24 hours, but they don't let you park overnight. But what if you're doing a through hike, you know? So it's kind of like, that's why it's like open to interpretation. It's like, okay, well, I'm not allowed to park overnight, but I can hike overnight. Oh, I got to stop here. Oh, these lights are weird. And it's a Sonic, maybe I'll get Sonic for dinner. I don't know. Anyway, okay, I will see I'll see you guys later. Let me figure out where I'm sleeping tonight. I can just park on the street. Anyway, so anyway, just to let you know, in Boulder, I Overlander says you can park outside the hospital, which would be perfectly fine. No one's gonna ticket you outside a hospital. I'm not gonna park in the hospital parking lot because I just think that's like really disrespectful because I've gone to the VA hospital before and I have not been able to find parking when I've had appointments. And so I don't park in hospital parking, but on the street you can park apparently and there's a bunch of vans. Um, so if I can do that, that would be fine. It's dark enough, no one cares. If that doesn't work out, I can go like 10 minutes to the trailhead where I'll be tomorrow and see if I can park there um, or just find a pullout because um, 
yeah it's just hard it's always been hard I've been here a dozen times in the last like three and a half years and it's always been an issue of finding somewhere where I feel safe where I'm comfortable where it's legal um, but like I said outside the massive apartment complex would be perfectly fine as well as long as there's no like permit parking or anything like that okay let me go drive another 20 miles and uh, and Denver area is massive you drive 100 miles you're still in the Denver area so it's kind of like Houston I'm hungry too and thirsty so I will see oh there's a yeah there's another van over there I keep seeing all these vans parked I'm like I just need one space comfortable for the night you know okay all right I'll see you guys later okay here is the road with the uh, with the hospital to my left and supposedly down here I can park let's see what this says down here no parking at any time toward the end okay right now let's see I'm gonna turn around <laughs> it's a van lifer okay I'm gonna park behind the van lifer perfect so I'm in Boulder I'm in Boulder next to the Riverbend Apartments and across from whatever hospital is over here. I don't know civilian hospitals, but anyway. So down here, there's another van lifer. Okay, there's a uh, car. There's a box truck, cam box truck camper. And then they, okay, they said park at the end of the cul-de-sac. So I'm gonna park down here on this road. I'll park in front of this van lifer. All right, so this is my home for the night. Not bad. I don't think anyone's going to bother me. Let's just make sure the restrictions aren't up. There's a Lime scooter. I really don't know if anybody <laughs> uses those anymore. Anyway, there's a van lifer from somewhere, Canada, I think. And I'm just gonna park behind this box truck here. There's no restrictions. I kinda wanna be in the dark. I don't wanna be in the light. Back up. Park in front of this dude. Sorry, <laughs> I know it's like when guys use the urinals in the uh, public restroom, it's like, dude, don't stand right next to me. I think this is fine. I'm right in front of a big ass light though. I would rather be on the other side of the road. I don't think I wanna be in the light. Okay, let me go forward again, sorry. This is what van life is. I wanna be in the dark. But they said park in the cul-de-sac, you won't get bothered, so. Let me, uh, let me park in front of that car. The car has solar panels on top of his car. That's awesome, okay. So let me turn around. Okay, I think the hospital is busy enough not to be bothered with me. Uh, you know what, I'm gonna park behind this dude over here. It's in the dark. I'm gonna park right behind this guy behind this guy right here that is quite mm, I should actually turn around okay let me turn around I'm not gonna park in front of him I'm gonna go down here and I'm gonna park in the cul-de-sac I think that's just better much much better okay sorry to wake everybody up I know it's like 9 30 at night here okay let me go down the other end it would be better to park in the dark but anyone coming down the street is gonna shine their headlights. So if I'm down at the end, I'd rather park the opposite direction. So like on this side of the road. Oh, I should park right here. Don't know what the restrictions are. I should hide behind the box truck actually. So let me do that, that's better. They're like, what's this woman doing? I'm like, I'm parking, dude. I should park behind the guy. But then that would be like, people that park right next to you on BLM. They're like, dude, you're like 300 feet away from me. You're too close. <laughs> that's what the, that's my BLM voice. Okay. Some guy's walking. I don't know who he is. Okay. So I'm just going to go behind the box truck and that should be fine. I don't care if I'm in bright light. All right. This is home. I need a cup of tea, but I'm not going to make one. It's too obvious. I'm just going to hide behind this guy. And let me back up. Okay. Oh, Denver area, you're too hard for me. You make it too difficult. All right, let me check my... I'm sorry to park so close to you, dude. 
let me make sure that um <laughs> someone actually uh, anyway in Pagosa Springs they like told me I was shining my headlights at them I'm like I'm not shining my headlights at anybody let me go check I'll be right back okay I'm in my home locked my doors it's cold in my van but it's like 70 outside it feels really nice okay I don't think anyone's gonna bother me uh, I'll just tell them I have COVID. <laughs> I've never had COVID, by the way. I, I, people tell me about their COVID experiences. I'm like, I've never had COVID. I haven't had the flu in years and I'm grateful, knock on wood, you know, knock on my steering wheel. Um, but uh, yeah, I could just say I have COVID and I'm just waiting. Like I can't drive because I have COVID. So, I mean, I'm outside a hospital. But I don't know civilian hospitals. I'm only in the VA. So I've only gone to civilian hospitals like for my colonoscopy and a couple community care things. But I generally don't know how the system works because in the VA, you just walk in, you give them your last initial, like last name initial and your last four of your social. And then they just say, OK, and like, OK, veteran, go this way. <laughs> anyway, OK, it's uh, 945. I'm going to bed. I'm getting up super early. I'm 10 minutes away from the trailhead. So I'm going to get up at five and just like maybe just make a cup of tea here i don't know what time it, i don't know what time it gets i can't even speak i don't know what time it gets light here um since we're getting into fall now um it's already like august so if it's like this at 5 a.m then i'll just uh i'll get the hell out of here but i think this is a good spot i don't think anyone's going to bother me and there's a couple of van lifers i think there's six of us on this road and then a car camper so yeah wish i was in a little bit darker area but i think this is fine Good morning, it's 6 a.m. I'm moving my van right now. There's one neighbor, don't know who else I have. I need to get to the trailhead, which is 11 minutes away because I wanna make sure I got parking. It's a Sunday, I forgot that it's gonna be busy. I woke up, I was like, oh, I can sleep in. I'll go to the trailhead, I'll start hiking about 7.30 or so. I think it would be good. This is a perfect spot, that was fantastic. I'll definitely park here again. I'm sure during the daytime it gets busy with the hospital visitors. Okay, let's go hike and then uh, driving three hours into central Colorado. Oh, I'll go back to bed. Okay, I'm gonna drink my orange juice. I haven't even eaten anything. I've gotta like just get out of here and get to the trailhead. Boulder, Colorado is actually a really nice town. Um, you can actually probably park in this neighborhood. I mean, if you park in front of like a fence or something, but there's no restrictions. So I could probably have parked down here as well. I don't think anybody would have cared. There's some like duplexes and apartments and things, but I figured this is probably a local hike, so there'll probably be dogs off leash, but there's dogs on leash there. Yeah, it's just like, anyway. Um, yeah, I probably could park in front of this church. Okay, I'll remember this next time. This might be better than the hospital. But yeah, you can park all the way down here. Okay, this is great. Yeah, there's a bunch of like apartments and things. And then down here, there's parking right here as well. I could park, let's see. Compact car parking. Okay, so let me see if there's parking at the trailhead. This is really nice. Yeah, Boulder is kind of a cute little downtown on Broadway. Uh, lots of like little shops and things you can walk around. Um, and then down here is like the fancy homes. So let's see up here. And this is the Sanitas something loop. It's supposed to be a little bit difficult, but that's fine, I'm, I can do it. And then this is the trailhead over here. Yeah, I figure it's probably gonna get busy Sunday morning. Already is busy. It's only like 6 a.m. So yeah, let me park in here. Oh wow, the parking lot's already full. The Centennial Trailhead is where we're at. So let me get parking. Oh, I hope there's parking. Okay, 